Hi guys, we're back at Smash Fishing. We're at the crack of dawn and we're gonna go after some little mini marlins. So stay tuned, it's Smash Fishing, baby. Oi, oi. <laughs> Just got here now, it's an absolutely stunning day, not a breath of wind. And what I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna get my chum mixed up quickly, and I'll quickly get my float set up, and uh, maybe wake up a little bit. <laughs> really simple to mix up chum. This is all the leftover bread from my house. I saved up all the little bits. There's no waste then either. That's all you're doing. Well, probably better to get some water in first. There we go, got a little bit of water in there. All I'm gonna do is just pile a load of bread straight in the bucket. So it's always a good idea to save a couple of slices, just in case any big mullet come past and then you can quickly get the bread out and hopefully capture them. And all you do now is just mush it up with your hands. And all you need is any old fish oil. It doesn't really matter what brand, as long as it's got some attractant there. And then just get a good glug of that straight in the bucket. The idea with this, if you want just mullet, then use more bread and less fish oil. If you want stuff like mackerel and long nose, then a little bit more fish oil would definitely help you. It's definitely bringing in the seagulls. <laughs> so I'll get all this mixed up now. Definitely don't put your hands in the oil because uh, you'll stink for a week. Get this mixed up, let's go get set up on the float. That boat looks like something out of Terminator. <laughs> a little solid barge there. This is the setup I'm using today, guys. Really small pencil float, half ounce weight, and I've got about a two and a half foot trace to a size one hook. And the bait I've got is just two little mackerel here that I'm just gonna slice into little strips and send out there. Cause this, if you want a lot of garfish, Mackerel is definitely the way forward. It really is a stunning day today. Not a breath of wind, we've got the bright sunshine. That's what you want. I don't usually get up this early, but I'm glad I did. Hopefully, the garfish are around. The reason I like to go for the garfish because I use them a lot for bait. It saves me a bit of money in the tackle shop. And uh, they're actually pretty good eating. So if we get one today, or a couple of decent ones, then we'll do a nice cook on it. Fish on. <laughs> that didn't take long. Come on. I love the scrap these give. They start jumping out the water, doing all sorts of little tricks. And there we go. One garfish down. Well, I do recommend having a rag if you fish for these because they are scaly. There you go. First garfish down. Beautiful little creatures, very similar to the needlefish that they get in the uh, in the US. I'm just going to dispatch this now, and hopefully we get another one. You can catch bream doing this as well. Often the bream will come up in the chum slick, and uh, you can get them on the tiny pieces of mackerel or squid. Oh, I missed them again. <laughs> so what they do is chase it in as you're uh, reeling in slowly. Got him this time. Whoa. Oh, look at that, he fell off. You beauty. There you go, one flappy fish. <laughs> Quite a good size, these ones as well. They are a bit finicky today because the boats keep coming past, but they're definitely here. Nice little, nice little garfish there. Happy days. This one gave a good old scrap. <laughs> Come here. 
for a little garfish. That one didn't have fight. Not a monster, but still. Look at the beak on that. Give it a nasty little nip, these things, will. Get the hook out. Such great fun doing this. Really enjoyable. Nice to see. And these are excellent bait. That's why uh, I keep a lot of them. As I said before, saves you money. Floats gone under, guys. Oh, did I miss him? I missed it. <laughs> Gone for a smaller hook now. They seem to be really finicky, so I'm going to put a smaller hook on, and hopefully, with a little bit smaller bait, they will come out and uh, come out and grab it. Nice little long nose. <laughs> you can tell that's a better one. <laughs> Garfish starting to turn up now. Nice one. Fresh bait. Fish on. Perfect little conga size that one. Look at that. Pulls in. Starting to load up a few now, eh, mate? Yeah, number four. Nice. It's the thing with garfish, guys. Once they turn up, you can catch multiple, one after a t one after another. And it's great fun, especially on light tackle. I'm only using 10 pound line, my mullet rod, and a tiny little float. I got him on. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I missed him. Oh, that's a better one. That's a catch and cooker. Come on! Oh no, <laughs> that one gave a good scrap for the size of it. What a beef! Come here, come here. It's a good thing about these little, little octopus hooks. They hook them right in the corner of the jaw every time. Perfect. Oh, I missed him. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get the camera on. Run again, run again. Go on then, go on. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Give up a good little scrap, eh? I love it. You can't beat it, mate. Absolutely love it. Yeah. Wow. Nice little fatty there, guys. This is going to save me a lot of money in conga bait, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. And on my other channel, my other channel's called Smash Random, if anyone ain't seen it. Uh, on a big chunk of this, I caught a three and a half pound bass. Got him? Yeah, got him. It's cool the way they just scoot along the surface, eh? Yeah. It's like a little ballyhoo size, that one. <laughs> Another one bites the dust. Go on. 
take it. He hammered it for a second. All right. As soon as that float hit, there we go. Oh, I missed him. <laughs> Jesus. Paul's got a big one on. Hey, that's a nice one. Come on, take it. Take oh, it. Summertime. Boom. Summertime. <laughs> yeah, I got him. Oh, he's hanging in the tide, this one. <laughs> it is so far, eh? Yeah. Lovely job. Look at that, guys. Double hookup. Uh, yours is like twice the size of mine, though. <laughs> oh, it's when they hang in the tide like that, eh? Oh, this is a better one. That's definitely a better one. Not the monster there. We want that beast. There we go. Another one down. Fresh bait. Another one down. You beauty. They're not huge, but they're perfect bait size. These, every single one of them. Look at that eyeball. Oh, she's a fighter. She's a fighter. Ah, that's a better one. That's a catch and cook. Yeah. That's a lot better one. Wasn't even looking my rod then, guys. <laughs> that, that's a lovely one, that. That's a good stamp. That's the ones you want to take the fillets off and start munching on. You're going in the cook pot. Seem to be getting the better ones when the tide's gone down a bit, right near the bottom, eh? Yeah. I stayed. Another one down. We'll be packing up soon, guys. We're just going to try just for a couple more for extra bait. And then I'll be in the kitchen and we'll have a nice cook up. I don't know if it will pick it up on the camera guys, but you can see our scent trail all the way to the castle on the other side of the bay. <laughs> we definitely chummed up this area. Come out of nowhere that. Another good one as well. Gonna be heading off in a minute guys the fishing sort of slowed down now paul's just taking the heads off his long nose and we're going to keep those for the spider crab season and conga fishing so i'll see you in the kitchen back in the kitchen now guys i've got two long nose that i uh, filleted and i took all the meat off as you can see you don't get a huge amount of meat but it's enough for a little bit of a feed i'm just going to experiment with another little cook and all I'm going to do is get some soy sauce in there, into my bag, and I'm sort of just going to marinate this, this meat. Get a little bit of soy sauce. Then I've got garlic, ginger, and chili flake. Lovely. I've got the good old chili oil. And all of this is just going to soak inside it. 
and hopefully make it taste delicious. And the good old salt and pepper. It's always nice to uh, experiment with different fish just to see how you like it cooked. So that's why you see a lot of uh, a lot of the cooks on the channel. I like to do just just random cooks just to see if it tastes good. So what I'm going to do is just mix all that up now and get our fish in. Beautiful. Get that in there. Get it zipped up. Get it well shaken through. And as you can see. It's almost like an Asian style fish sauce. Beautiful. So I'm going to leave that for a good 20 minutes now just to soak through and then we'll get it on, this, on our barbecue skewers. So our fish have been marinating for a while now. Oh, that smelling really nice. It smells absolutely delicious. Check that out. Nicely coated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and roll it up into sort of a uh, sort of a circle if I can. <laughs> this is a lot more tricky than it looks. There we go, got it curled up finally. All I'm gonna do is stick that straight through there. And as you can see, perfect little skewers. So what I'm gonna do is start putting them all on now. And we'll start cooking them. Got to say, these are smelling really good. I got this idea from a subscriber. They sent me a picture on Instagram of how they cook long nose. And uh, they literally do the same without the marinade and put it on the sticks like this. So I thought, why not do a little marinade on it and see what it comes out like. What a beast. I'd rather put this on the barbie, but it's blowing a gale at the moment. So we've got to put it in the frying pan. This is smelling absolutely delicious. Look how well the meat actually holds on. This looks amazing. I think we're onto something here. <laughs> Who says long nose don't look good? Ha! <laughs> that looks amazing. Definitely going to be looking at them different from now on. Nice little crispy edge on that. And that would be great on a barbie. That would be brilliant on a barbie. Because the meat is actually quite firm. It holds together well. But then when you put a little bit of pressure it flakes off. That is a perfect little frying fish that. So there you go guys. Lovely bit of long nose. Got some fresh lemon there. Get that over the top. And this is smelling amazing. Usually with garfish, when you cook it, it doesn't smell that great. But uh, marinating it like that, it, it masks the smell. It makes it smell amazing. Mmm. I'm gonna have a little long nose now. That is amazing. 
Look at that. Nice little bit of crisp on the end. All the delicious juice coming out. And that is so juicy. That is amazing. Oh, this is highly recommended. Look at that, it falls off. Long nose is amazing. It tastes a bit like mullet to me. Definitely got that mullet taste to it. Mmm. This, that really surprised me how, how good that really is. That's got to be one of the best cooks I've done yet. I'm going to have to experiment a bit more with the barbecue. Look, even the little circles, they hold together when you take them off. Mm. Oh, that's amazing. So stay tuned for the next episode, guys. I'm going to polish this off for the minute. If you want any merch, the link's in the description. If you like the video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. It's Smash Fishing, baby. Woo!